upcoming 2045 long range transportation plan. The MPO's five program areas are shown on this screen. Um, should not be new to any of you. We've presented this many times. But again, these programs allow us to prioritize projects based on how much each project is expected to improve performance in these <coughs> categories. The State of Good Repair and Resiliency program focuses on maintaining pavement, bridge, transit assets, and resiliency to major storms. The Vision Zero program focuses on uh, roadway safety. Smart Cities focuses on reducing congestion using operational treatments like the presentation you just saw rather than widenings. And the Real Choices When Not Driving category focuses on enhancing multimodal transportation options. And we have a fifth pro, uh, program category on this slide called Major Projects, which focuses on adding capacity to facilitate economic growth. This presentation is only going to cover the top four uh, program areas and the future needs in each program category because the fifth category, Major Projects, is considered using a separate process and it will be brought forward to you at a later time. To assess how we're doing, we consider a variety of metrics in each area and they allow us to figure out how these projects are going to perform in the future. So we begin by taking this information, assessing our performance today, and comparing that to what our performance could be in 2045 given the current level of funding. We then take that number and compare it to what the performance could be by 2045 with current funding levels plus a portion of the sales tax revenue. For the state of good repair and resiliency, we measure repair and replacement schedules for pavement, bridges, transit assets, as well as the recovery time following a category three storm and the economic losses avoided from those um, stormwater improvements. For Vision Zero, we measure total crashes, fatal crashes, injury crashes, and bike peg crashes. For smart cities, we measure the reliability of travel times and the hours of delay to be experienced. And for real choices when not driving, we measure uh, pop, uh, people and jobs served by the bus system and the walk-bike <coughs> facilities, as well as frequency of bus service. So beginning with the State of Good Repair and Resiliency program, again, what we're doing here is looking at what we could get if the current funding trend holds through 2045 and comparing that to what would happen if we had current funding trend plus the sales tax. For pavement, the trend investment scenario results fall short of meeting our standard for resurfacing roads once every 17 years. With the amount of funding in the trend scenario, only 60% of our major roads would be resurfaced on schedule. Some roads would be resurfaced more, off, more often than that, but far more would be resurfaced a lot less frequently. And it works out that the countywide average would be resurfacing once every 28 years. Alternatively, under the trend plus scenario, all roads in the county, including local roads, collectors, arterials, and up, would be resurfaced every 17 years on average, thus meeting the guideline standard. Another element of this program is maintaining bridges in a state of good repair, which is essential both from an infrastructure and a safety perspective. We looked at the bridges that are currently listed in the capital improvements programs, and we assumed these bridges to be representative projects, allowing us to determine what the need and what the cost of the improvements would be. Using that information, we estimated that under the trend scenario, we could afford to perform all of the necessary routine maintenance on bridges and address some deficiencies by performing one major rehab or replacement project and one minor rehab or replacement project each year. Under the trend plus scenario, we could, uh, we could again continue that routine maintenance, but also get three major rehab or replacement projects and 11 minor projects. That would help us begin addressing the backlog of needs. The third element in this program is transit asset maintenance. These scenarios were identified based on HART's current passenger vehicle fleet, and we also coordinated with HART um, and utilize their 10-year transit development program. The trend scenario for transit asset maintenance results in a funding shortfall. That shortfall would prevent HART from replacing its buses once every 12 years. If that funding trend continues through to 2045, 10% of the fleet will be older than 12 years. The average bus age would be nine years, and as a result, we would expect about eight service disruptions each weekday 
Um, a service disruption is what is colloquially referred to as a road call. You mean the bus breaking down? Breaking down, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> There's a long technical definition <laughs> for what a road call is. It means no one's getting where they need to go. <laughs> exactly that. The trend plus scenario, however, would allow Hart to expand its fleet from about 200 buses to 283 40-foot CNG buses while also replacing 100% of the fleet before they reach that standard of 12 years. The average bus age would be seven years. And because of the younger age of the fleet, we would expect about half as many road calls per bus by 2045. The last element in state of good repair and resiliency is resiliency to major storms. This assessment was performed as part of a tri-county resiliency study and it found that about 20% of Hillsborough County's network would be impacted by either a Cat 3 storm or high sea level rise, and about 11% of our network is vulnerable to a dramatic flood event, such as nine inches of precipitation in a short amount of time. The current funding trend of $46 million per year allows the local governments and FDOT to invest in some stormwater improvements, but still a large percentage of our network is in a vulnerable position. So we have to ask ourselves, if we can't improve all of the vulnerable roads, where do we start? And that's where criticality comes into play. So with the current funding level of $46 million per year, plus an additional $22 million, we could improve resilience on highly vulnerable roads that are also critical, such as evacuation routes and roads that lead to hospitals and other necessary services. Uh, beyond the $46 million per year with an additional $44 million, uh, that level of funding would allow us to make improvements on roads that are both highly and moderately vulnerable and also critical. <coughs> Some of the treatments that this funding would allow us, to, uh, allow us to pursue are raising road profiles, hardening substructures, adding more retention and detention ponds, depressing medians, and planting vegetation. Our next program area is Vision Zero, which focuses on safety. We presented this many times, so um, forgive me for repeating myself, but over the past five years, we've averaged almost 170 fatal and 1,600 serious injury crashes per year. Under the trend investment scenario for Vision Zero, we could reduce all crashes by more than 15%, which could prevent 25 fatalities per year by 2045. And under the trend plus investment scenario, we could reduce crashes between 30 and 35%, and that would result in more than 50 preventable fatalities each year. At the trend plus level of spending, by 2045, we could fund 500 miles of currently unlit roads, lights for 500 miles of currently unlit roads, fill in 1,400 miles of gaps and missing sidewalks, and do complete streets treatments on 350 miles of high crash roads. Our third program category <coughs> is smart cities. This investment program, again, focuses on reducing congestion <coughs> and <improving coughs> time reliability by operational treatments, not by widening. <coughs> we modeled congestion on our major road network and projected that if no improvements are made by 2045, delay could be as high as 2.8 times higher than what we see today just due to the population increase. Thankfully, the capital improvements programs from our local governments show robust funding to tackle this problem. If the, trend, if the funding trend continues by 2045, we can improve 130 miles of major roads, which would have the effect of reducing delay by 40% over 2045 levels and improving average travel time by 10%. But if we jump up to the current spending plus a portion of the sales tax, we could improve 220 miles of major roads. We could reduce delay from 2045 levels by 80% and improve travel time by 30%. With that level of funding, freeways could receive treatments like incident management, ramp meters to help control flow on entry and exit ramps, um, pre-trip and en route messaging, similar to what uh, Bob Fry just presented you, weather and work zone management, and on the arterials, the cities and the county could implement treatments like video monitoring, um, expanding their intersection improvement programs, 
transit signal prioritization at more intersections and loop detectors that help them retime signals on the fly given congestion. The real choices when not driving category includes projects which can facilitate multimodal transportation by improving access to transit services, uh, building trails and side paths for pedestrians and cyclists, and improving options for transportation disadvantaged population. This program is particularly important for those who can't drive or don't own a car, many of whom live in our communities of concern. And to identify needs for trails and side path facilities, we looked at several criteria, one being proximity to communities of concern, another being population and job density near the facilities, um, level of traffic stress, and proximity to Vision Zero corridors. The higher the combined score of all four criteria, the greater the need for these facilities. Under the trend scenario, more than 600,000 people could be served by the walk-bike network, which by 2045, 600,000 people will be about a third of our population. This could also fund 50 miles of trails and side paths, including the Upper Tampa Bay Trail, Bypass Trail, Green Artery, and some others. Under the trend plus scenario, more than half of our 2045 population would be within a quarter mile's distance of a trail or side path. And we could build three times as many trails and side paths, um, which would equate to almost complete build out of the network. Almost done. To identify needs for transit and paratransit services, we looked at criteria like population and job density and frequency of bus service. We also, again, coordinated with HART to take a look at their 10-year um, transit development plan. And under the trend scenario, 22 routes could see increased service frequency. And under the trend plus scenario, we could fund um, 38 routes with increased service frequency, seven new bus rapid transit routes, five new local routes, three new express routes, add service in South County and Plant City, three new transit centers, and new rail service. If we were to do the, if we were to invest in the trend scenario, that would result in about 30% of people in jobs having access to great transit facilities, but 60% of people in jobs would have minimal service or none at all. Under the trend plus scenario, 90% of people in jobs would have somewhat frequent service or better. That works out to between three and four buses per hour or even more than that and only 11% of people in jobs would have minimal service or worse. 